forensic dentistry. So, uh, please say hello to from every institute. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Thank you. Okay. Hello. 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 Everybody, um, this is Lisa Chen from National Taiwan University. Okay, National Taiwan University, we can hear your voice. Okay, please, everyone, stand by and mute your microphone. Thank you. Hi, good morning everyone. Uh, this is dental session in eight pound. Uh, I'm Tomoshiko Moriyama, a gastroenterologist in the main venue in Singapore. Uh, Today, the, then we will start the first session from uh, first presentation is from Tohoku University. Sorry, uh, Dr. Kosaka, please go ahead. Okay, thank you, Dr. Moriyama. Well, I'm grateful for being able to receive this kind of opportunity. So I'm going to start my presentation. The title is Visual Identification as Usual Work in Japan, Activity in Miyagi Prefecture. So first of all, I would like to introduce our department. Our department was founded in 2013, summer. It was the first dental forensic department in the north part of Japan. And our members are Professor Sasaki and Associate Professor Dr. Suzuki and Assistant Professor, this is me, and three okay. graduate students from Japan, Indonesia, and Mongolia. As I already mentioned, our department was founded in 2013. This was after the Great East Japan earthquake. It occurred on 11th of March 2011, it was seven years ago. This is the map of the seismic intensity at the Great East Earth Japan earthquake. The plus mark indicates the center of the shock. So you can see how near the Miyagi prefecture is to the center of the center of the shock. As you can imagine, Miyagi Prefecture had a serious damage caused by this earthquake and also by the tsunami. And this is the number of the victims. You can see so many people died and many people are still missing. As the disaster, uh, dental identification was needed, so over 2,000 dentists helped for the identification. During the activity at this tragedy, the importance of identification was widely recognized, and this was lead to the foundation of our department. So today, I would like to introduce our work. And this is the flowchart of the identification system used in the Great East Japan earthquake. Antimortem and postmortem of oral information was gathered and matched. Antimortem and postmortem information includes dental charts, x-rays, intraoral photos, and other oral information such as dental cast, and so on. In Miyagi Prefecture, experts from information science joined the identification team. So you can see this dental finder. Uh, this is a matching software provided by Professor Alki's laboratory. This is uh, information science in Tohoku University. And using this dental finder, many people were identified. This upgraded version of this software called Dental Finder Pro is available in the internet. And this is the flow chart of the daily identification system in Miyagi Prefecture. In Japan, the police treat all cases of unnatural death. 
And when they consider the forensic autopsy is needed, the poli police will ask the forensic medicine department. And if the deceit is unidentified and has teeth, the police or the forensic medical doctor will ask us to take a dental chart. In Chahop University, we have both forensic medicine department and forensic dentistry department. This is our department. So we can easily collaborate to work with together. And this is the Japanese health insurance system. I won't explain all of this system, but you can see we pay just 10 to 30% of the treatment fee. It, the percentage depends on their age and economic situation, but just 10 to 30%. So you can see uh, the health insurance system in Japan is well established, and most of the people in Japan has an insurance card. And so many kinds of treatment will be covered by the insurance system. So many people will visit hospitals and clinics for treatment or medical checkup. So because of this situation, it is expected that oral information could be obtained for high probability. And this is the dental chart used in Japan. The outline is already printed as a dot line. And in, in Miyagi Prefecture, we are used to this Miyagi Prefecture version in the right side. So we usually use this version. But if the deceased, we have no information, we use this JDA version. It's a Japanese Dental Association version. And this is an example of dental charge recording. We draw the tooth outline and indicate the detail as possible. In this case, you can see there is a rotation and dislocation teeth. And also there is a little bit space in the middle. So that kind of detail we have to draw. And if there is a prosthesis like denture, we also draw the shape in the blank. So it will be easy to understand by visualizing like this. And this is the comparison sheet. Antemortem information is obtained by any dental stuff like dental chart x-rays and dental cast, uh, which are provided from the home dentist. And postmortem data will be obtained from the dental chart. And then we fill in the consistency blank. We can choose its match or doesn't match but no contradiction or it doesn't match and is inconsistent. I mean, doesn't match, but no contradiction. It means, like, for example, if the antemortem says that there is an inlay, and in the postmortem status, it says if there is a crown, it could be happen. Because if there is some time lag after the dental treatment, within that period, he or she, the victim, may have an extra dental treatment, so it could happen. But, for example, if the antemortem said that the tooth is extracted by a periodontal disease or something, and the postmortem says that there is an inlay, it couldn't happen, so it's inconsistent. And this is an example. In this case, there was a detailed dental record provided from the home doctor, so we compared with the dental records for each teeth. And in the comments, we write the reason of the consistency, and at last, we make a decision of matching possibility of this person. And this is the number of forensic autopsy in Tohoku University. There's 300 to 400 per year. And this is the number of forensic autopsy that dental information was taken. It's almost our job. It is increasing these years. We think that uh, this is because of our collaboration with forensic medicine department and also the right understanding of the police officers in Miyagi Prefecture. 
because together the dental information from the home dentist, this is the work of police officers. So we usually also collaborate with police officers. And this is the percentage of method used to identify the person. On the left side, this is the percentage of the Great East Japan earthquake. And you can see 86% of the victims are identified by physical characteristics and belongings, but 10% was identified by dental information. And if you see the right side uh, for daily work, half of the victims are identified by DNA type, but 30% is identified by dental information. So this shows that dental identification can be useful in both situations. But there is a one concern. Forensic dentists like me can do the dental identification usually for daily work, but other dentists like working at private clinics these kind of dentists have less opportunity to do some identification system. But in a huge accident or disaster, of course, we need their help. So a training program is needed. In Japan, we have many dental associations in each region and is trying to do a dental identification training program. And of course, in Miyagi Prefecture, we're doing this kind of system. So this is the dental identification training program. This is an annual one um, chaired by Miyagi Dental Association. Dentists gather from Tohoku University, private clinics, or other dental institutions. And last year, many police officers, Coast Guard officers, and dental hygienists participated in this training program. This is very important because if there is a number of deceased, we, we definitely need their support. And these are pictures taken at the training program. We used a phantom with a dental model, and the dental model had several patterns. For example, with missing teeth, or with dentures, or with metal coverage. And to make it rea realistic situation, also some dirt and fallen leaves were filled into the oral cavity. And if the disaster occurs, electricity may be out of order. And this, in fact, this happened at the time in the Great East Japan earthquake. So this training program was done in a gloomy room, I mean a dark room. And you can see two dentists. One is checking the oral status, and the other is writing down the dental chart. And besides the doctor, you can see the police officer who is lighting the oral area. And after taking the dental chart, we did the comparison work and discussed about the case. We made a several team, and every team had a different case. So these are the works that we are doing, usually. And this is the future prospect. We have to promote some activities for the public to gain a better understanding. And very, it is very important to make a standard system to store the dental information. So this could be useful not only for disaster and accidents, but also for the living missing person and usual work. And to increase the number of forensic dentists who can lead the DVI team, this is also important. So this is my last slide. So thank you for listening. Thank you for the nice presentation. Do you have any question or comment? From Kagoshima University. So I am Nakamura. I am the, today I am the second co chair. So I have a question. I think it's the, your the system for identification is very useful. 
especially the, it is a good idea to use the data of the national health insurance. I think it's um, most of the people are covered for uh, registration. So my question is, so do you have any idea to use the X-ray X-ray data like a pantomograph in the future the plant? I think it's the X-ray is more more details to identify the uh, um, victims. I, what do you think? Uh, thank you for your question. Um, yes, to use the X-ray is very important. So in the future, um, I think we have to collaborate with information science technicians and make a system to store this kind of simple um, X-ray photo. Thank you. And I think when you use the health insurance data, are there any trouble or not? Because uh, I think it's, the data is uh, completely correct or not, it's sure, right? Yes, I, I think it's very difficult. <laughs> we have to manage in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? No? Okay. Before moving to, okay. Questions from Indonesia, please. Yes, please. Sumatra, Sumatra Atra University. Do you have any questions? Thank you. Is it our sir? Okay, we are from the University of Sumatra Utara. Uh, is there any particular reason why you are not using FDI chart? Thank you. Um, thank you for your question. Um, we you, we know FDI system, but uh, we usually use our uh, Japanese system. Okay. Is there any questions? Questions from Indonesia, uh, from Jakarta, please. Yes, please. Question. Uh, my question is, uh, if, for example, uh, there's a disaster happened in Indonesia and it involves a Japanese citizen, uh, where can we uh, ask for uh, dental data information uh, to the government of Japan? Thank you. Um, thank you for your question. Um, you can ask the police officer, Japanese police. Uh, are you are you prepared for the uh, dental chart th that can be uh, 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 that can uh, that can be translated to English uh, so that the DPI operations op uh, officers uh, can read your data? Um, yes, in the future we're thinking about translating into English. Yeah, but now it's only in Japanese. はい、ありがとうございます。はい、台湾ユニバーシティ。はい、ありがとうございます。はい、ありがとうございます。はい、ありがとうございます。はい、ありがとうございます。はい、ありがとうございます。はい、ありがとうございます。はい、ありがとう
the what kind of training? Hello? Hello, uh, National Taiwan? Can you repeat it again? Yeah. Uh, because the your voice is a little bit low, so... Uh, the question for National Taiwan University is the training program of the uh, forensic dentist uh, to perform the uh, forensic identification of the DBI. Is that clear? The training program, such as uh, timing, frequency, each year, or any uh, resource to set up the training program. The, the question is, when disaster happened, you have a, have a participant to do training for participants. I'd like to know what training you do. Yeah. I think it's they are asking about the training. Yes. Yes. Yes, about the training. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, excuse me. Uh, yeah, yes, we have the training program for this last year. I'd like to know uh, training for what? Uh, what makes it you training for people to identify the training? I let you know the training uh, of the people. You yeah. want for training, not the training, yeah. right? Yeah, training. Yeah, training for oh. for identification. Yeah. Oh. You have to collect people to participate to identify. I let you know what training you do. Training あ、で、要するに、トレーニングする内容自体、どんな内容を、トレーニング。演讲的那个女生听不懂<笑> 辨认证这个牙的模型
Okay, time is up. Uh, before going to the next session, I have to apologize for my misunderstanding. The chairperson of this session is Dr. Aksa in Airlangga University. Uh, so, uh, would you uh, would you chair this session from now? <laughs> right. Sure. I will be in one sure. of the sure. audience sure. from now. Right. Okay. Okay. okay thank you for session. opening the session, Dr. Moriyama. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kawasaka, for the wonderful lecture and letting us know that you have done something big, really big, in the Miyagi Prefecture. Uh, thank you again, Dr. Moriyama, for uh, opening the session. And this ne the next presentation will be delivered by Professor Mika Silvia from Universitas Erlangga uh, and followed by Dr. Akung Sosiawan. Both of you have uh, around 20 minutes for your presentation. Uh, Professor Mika, this is your time. Uh, please deliver your presentation. Good morning, everybody. May I introduce myself? My name is Mika Silvia Margareta. Professor in Faculty of Dental Medicine, University Erlangga. Head of Forensic Odontology Department. Recently, there are a lot of homicide range from simple to sophisticated method. Since the knowledge of people increases following watching cinema or television and interest internet browsing. We suggest a new simple method to find a suspect with saliva as a tool for identification. My presentation today is about a blood group identification in saliva on cigarette butt cases. In this case, the crime scenes where a dead body of a 46 year old male were found several evidence material that may reveal the cause of death and the murder identification. Their victim death may caused by a blow on his forehead using a blunt and heavy thing. Evidence that may related to the murder investigation were one feet long metal pipe, shoe mark, two cigarette butts and several stones. The man was the chief of several workers in concrete project who uses the same safety shoes. How can the investigator solve this? Next, please. So uh, we make we make a research about observation and inhibition method on saliva with directly analysis method for one hour, three hours, and six hours. Next, please. My, our study is, is it really possible to detect blood group from saliva using absorption inhibition method? If yes, is it still possible to detect it when it is reported to the police until six hours? Why? Because humidity in Indonesia is above 60 percent. Percent in other country, the season with four season may have the humidity as low as 30 percent, which facilitates saliva evaporation. People have a blood group antigen expressed in bone, teeth, nail, hair, saliva, sperm, and vagina fluid. So they have a genetic phenotype. 85% are scrator and 15% are non scrator Absorption, elution, and absorption inhibition method can be used to determine of blood group. Next. Unfortunately, we can not determine the blood group from non scatter people with saliva, but only directly with blood tests. Who are non scatter 
and secretor people. This is the next next slide. Non secretor people can be determined if the agglutination result is more than one per eight. This is cannot be used to determine the blood group. Secretor people can be determined if the agglutination result less than one per eight. So they can to determine the blood group. The next slide, please. Our result is mean of protein level with spectrophotometry examination with room temperature 20 degrees Celsius, exposure one hour until six hours. You may know um, mean of protein level for one hour is 143 and three hour more 149 and six hour 186. The time of exposure on the room temperature there is an increase of protein level at one hour, three hour until six hour. Why? Because as the longer time of the cigarette buds contacted to the saliva, the saliva was absorbed to the cigarette buds. The next. Table two, blood group agglutination with macroscopic examination in different titration. Uh, we have a titration one, one per two, one per four, and and so on. So time is one hour, six, three hour, and six hour. And may you make the the result is it means that we can determine the blood group until six hour, positive in six hour. The conclusion is. CE SE gene is secretory blood group can be detected with agglutination absorption inhibitors and inhibition method, which is a simple method, and saliva in the cigarette buds can be used to detect secretory and blood group. So in this case we can in this case we can confirm in the suspect the suspect. The next the next slide. Thank, thank you for the thank you. Thank you, Professor Nick Sylvia. And uh, please, Dr. Akung Susiawan, to uh, deliver your presentation. Okay, Dr. Raki, thank you for the time. Uh, I will uh, present presenting my presentation about the use of TIT as a valuable statement on personal identification. As we know, uh, forensic odontology is a vital uh, uh, branch of forensic science that involves the, the application of dental science, the identification of unknown human remains, deal with a range of medical legal problems. It includes identification of the human remains of natural uh, disaster, terrorist activities, missing and known person as a central activity. Uh, for the example, the case of the Bali Blast one, for example, uh, the victim were identified by dental rates uh, about uh, uh, 56 percent. Uh, next, next, the use of teeth, as we know, as a uh, material, is not only limited to oh. identification of anatomical aspect but also can be used as a source of DNA for forensic identification. Next. It's because uh, DNA degraded through a variety of mechanism and it uh, a excellent source of DNA science. It, it can resist extreme condition due to the dentin and enamel factor which can provide protection for nuclear DNA and mitochondrial DNA from the DNA damage. Next. 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 
And the issue is uh, about how about DNA from teeth related on the graded DNA issue? To answer the, this question, uh, we have performed the DNA examination for, from uh, 10 patients who had been identified and checked with their family, father and mother, blood to confirm the magic condition. Next. Uh, we divide teeth specimen into two groups. Its group contains five teeth molars since the, the study used two methods to investigate the difference between brush method and drilling method to obtain the DNA from the teeth. And after that, we, 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 uh, we uh, perform DNA extraction and amplification with str uh, with a CODIS uh, standard in FBI. And after that, we, we visualize DNA with uh, acrylamide gel. And the result as, uh, uh, can be depiction with, with, uh, with the next slide. Next, next, yeah. In the in this in this uh, presentation, we we found that the teeth as uh, as a specimen are fallible, fallible specimen and on DNA personal identification identification because of all of the sample had a good research result plus our drilling method. And fortunately, we found uh, there was a mutation result, result dealing with T21S11 mutation on mother and child specimen compared with uh, uh, T21S11 rep uh, repetition reference. Next. There is the depiction, and uh, this uh, this uh, sequence, uh, DNA sequence, uh, depict that uh, uh, DNA from the teeth is a valuable uh, resource for uh, for uh, DNA sequence to 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 uh, obtain. How about uh, how the mutation uh, was happened. Next. Next. Okay. Next, yeah. In this, in this discussion, the finding of the study were associated with a mutation in the mother's side was found at a locus, locus uh, D21S11. That uh, this, this finding of this study, uh, with, as uh, stated by McKeown, uh, two thousand and eight, who found the same result, is that the locus of D D twenty one S eleven associated with the syndrome examination essentially genetically inherited by the mother. So, mutation associated with uh, D21S11, uh, S11 locus, the majority was associated with more maternal as found in this study. Next. In this case, uh, uh, we, we, uh, we, we have some suggestion about 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 uh, the use of the uh, the teeth to uh, DNA examination. But uh, if we have a, a we have a result with a uh, mutation, we must additional DNA examination uh, with uh, the other lossy to avoiding the mistake from from. From this case, we we can use a uh, DNA mitochondrial, uh, mitochondrial DNA analysis, analysis in hyper variable one and hyper variable two region, or examination with 
X chromosome, which uh, is uh, derived from the maternal line. If the, the case is uh, related on uh, the paternal line, we can use uh, eczema, eczema with a uh, Y chromosome. Next. As a, as a conclusion, uh, feet can be used as DNA specimen as good as other specimen, particularly uh, uh, like uh, blood. It, it means that the teeth is a fallible specimen on personal identification, not only for, an, uh, for, uh, uh, for uh, anatomical identification, but also in DNA identification. But uh, we need to be more careful in handling sample from the teeth through an effective DNA extraction method to prevent loss of DNA from the teeth. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Miko Silvia and Dr. Agung Susiawan from Universitas Erlangga for your clinical report presentation. Hopefully you and your forensic odontology team will gain more successful uh, in the future. So we come to the next presenter who comes from Hiroshima University. She is Dr. Oka, who is currently appointed as the Associate Professor at the Biomedical and Health Science, Hiroshima University. Dr. Oka, please deliver your presentation in about 15 minutes. Yes. Can you hear me? And I was right. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. And also okay for my first right. Okay. So hello everyone. あ、いや、左側の小さい画面を消した方がいい。それ一番下に下ろした方がいい。あ、左側の小さい画面を消した方がいい。あ、左側の小さい画面を消した方がいい。あ、左側の小さい画面を消した方がいい。あ、左側の
for example, matters related to wills, inheritance, insurance policies, prosecution of homicides, detection of fraudulent deaths, accident reconstruction, and remarriage, all depend on the identification of the disease. Morally, identification is usually important for closure and resolution by surviving relatives and friends. It can also be important in matters of humanitarian concern, including investigations of The big picture of the applied research and development in forensic dentistry for criminal justice purposes is to direct the findings of basic scientific research, research and development in broader scientific fields applicable to forensic dentistry and also other ongoing forensic science research toward the development of highly discriminating, accurate, reliable, cost-effective and rapid methods for the identification, analysis and interpretation of physical evidence for for criminal justice purposes. Another value is to promote contemporary forensic dentistry as a humanitarian tool to preserve human rights. Forensic odontologists and oral health professionals with forensic background aim to promote forensic dentistry and forensic science principles to caseworks with the purpose of preventing human rights violations through the application of best practice in human identification, age estimation, and wherever dental evidence is involved. In the past 5 to 15 years, Indonesia has experienced varied criminal cases and major casualties related to human trafficking, transportation accidents, terrorist attacks, and natural disasters. Over the years, dentistry has much to offer law enforcement in the detection and solution of crime or in civil proceedings. It is our commitment to protect the society from crimes, terrorism, and human rights violations. Dental professionals can, in fact, contribute to the identification and assist in forensic services in the police investigation to identify dead bodies and crimes. This time I will present my experience with the DVI national team, Indonesian DVI national team, who is responsible to further identify dead bodies in mass disasters. A disaster from forensic point of view by etiology is categorized into two, natural disasters and man-made disasters. Natural disaster is a major adverse event resulting from natural process of the earth, while the difference between natural natural and man-made disaster is the element of human intent or negligence that leads to human suffering and environmental damage. The examples of natural disaster are as follows. We experience tsunami, earthquake, volcanic eruptions, flood, bushfire, and also landslide. While in man-made disasters, we experience terrorist attacks, uh, transportation accidents, war, environmental damage, or occupational uh, accidents. Based on the Interpol guideline and from the casualty point of view, a disaster can be categorized as an open disaster or closed disaster. An open disaster is a major catastrophic event resulting in the deaths of a number of unknown individuals from whom no prior records or descriptive data are available. It is difficult to obtain information about the actual number of victims following such events. A closed disaster is a major catastrophic event resulting in the deaths of number of individuals belonging to a fixed identifiable group, for example, in an aircraft crash with the passenger's list. As a rule, Comparative anti-mortem data can be obtained more quickly in the case of closed disasters. Combination of these two forms are also conceivable. For example, an aircraft crash in a residential area. When we talk about scientific crime investigation, it involves uh, the victim, the evidence, and also the possible perpetrator. While in a non, in a non-crime, we only concern about victims and evidence. 
So the aims of forensic examinations is to prove the crime, to find evidence, to identify victims and perpetrators, to find the wounds and injury, to find the severity of the injury or the cause of cause and also mechanism of death, and to reconstruct the crime. Indonesia follows disaster victim identification Interpol guideline to proceed human identification process with four main procedures. The first phase is the scene phase. In this phase, it is very important to keep all evidence necessary for further identification process, including properties on or near the dead bodies. There is a special attention when we face a disaster caused by a terrorist attack because the first responders need to save all evidence that also may be close to find the perpetrators. The second phase is the post-mortem phase where all forensic experts work together to collect data from dead bodies including fingerprints, dental, DNA, medical condition and also properties. The third phase is the antemortem phase where we collect the data of the victims prior of the death. Usually we meet family, relatives, friends or representatives that could give us necessary information and antemortem data. After we collect both data for second and the third phase, we compare our notes and do the matching process. Some characteristics usually stand out from each individual. If we succeeded in matching AM and PM data, we established a positive identification to the victim. How we identify the dead bodies? We have to conduct a scientific method. We have to identify accurately due to its social, legal, and justice values, and we have to, we have to do all procedure efficiently. Therefore, there are certain strategies that we need to apply in order to fill, fulfill those requirements. The principles of, the principle of personal identifications, <coughs> we must concern for the comparison between antemortem data and postmortem data, <coughs> or more data, more uh, accurate conclusion. If the data is matched, it may strengthen the conclusion. If the, the data is unmatched, then the suspect is excluded. There are three primary identif identifiers, which are fingerprints, dental, and DNA. Mostly in a major mass disaster, we found seriously damaged burn or decomposed bodies caused by the disaster itself and other factors such as the time period from death to evacuation. In that condition, fingerprint often found in a damaged, uh, damaged condition. Therefore, we cannot use fingerprints as our primary identifi identifier. We use dental and DNA evidence as our primary identifiers. The aims of personal identification is to hand the victim to the family for burial or cremation, the status of the victim, to establish the status of relatives, uh, to give civilian rights and duties, and also related to financial matters. Dental evidence can be used in a deductive method to determine sex, race, age estimation. Often used for anthropological activities such as exhumation of a mass grave. We use comparative method for identification by comparing dental antemortem and postmortem data. Teeth and jaws can provide a tremendous amount of information in many fields. For example, disaster victim identification, missing and un unidentified persons, child abuse and neglect, domestic violence and sexual abuse. Age estimation in human trafficking and age fraud cases. For example, the success uh, and also, sorry, the age estimation in human trafficking and age fraud cases. The success of human identification in general depends on the adequate antemortem information, which often results a significant impact on justice and human rights values. <clears throat> An incomplete postmortem assessment can lead to a delayed identification and represents a violation of human rights and international humanitarian law. 
Forensic dentistry can lead to a swift identification of nameless cadavers. Also, it provides evidence to the families, which may be used in court, as in cases of mass disaster, genocide, mass graves, or after a terrorist attack. So as already mentioned before, the individual dental characteristic, dentist information, dental radiograph positions are all that uh, we need to be able to fill the antemortem and the postmortem uh, form, uh, DVI form, and uh, for later uh, matching process. These are the data that we need to collect. <coughs> To compare dental, antemortem, and postmortem data, we can use software to make the matching process quicker, or we can do it manually, usually involve more than one forensic odontology expert, and in some cases, we need a more detailed laboratory work. For example, in Victoria Bushfire in Australia, the experts need to separate human and non-human remains, including the teeth. Another primary identifier, which is DNA, is the most reliable method for human identification. DNA is very preserved, can be detected even in a low copy number, but it takes time to process and quite expensive. Human identification by DNA is a comparative method of DNA evidence, which is victim's DNA, with the DNA reference. <sighs> What is the strategies of DNA identification to fulfill the above requirements? First, we have to obtain the correct victims list. Make sure that the antemortem number is correct. Possib the possibility of a perpetrator existence also need to be checked. We need to have the family or relative risk and also the contact person. We need to monitor day one, day two, day three, etc. Uh, whether the victims um, is in the water or it's a, a result from an air crash, if it's in the body parts, pieces, how many body parts, and in coordination with phase two, the condition to primary identifier, uh, sorry, identifier, and also the assessment to victim's condition information in regards to obtain antemortem data or fingerprint, dental or DNA. Assessment of DNA samples taken from the victim's body, quantity, quality, packaging, and also storaging. It also depends on direct or indirect method. We also have need to concern the daily DNA evidence transportation if the location of the scene and the postmortem area is far away. Uh, and the last, uh, yes. Uh, sorry for interrupting. Uh, yes. Your your time is about to end. Okay. Uh, you have another three minutes. Yeah. Okay, most coach. Okay. The, and the last is the lab procedure until the data analysis and matching process uh, can be fulfilled. We have two methods of DNA uh, collecting reference. The first is the direct method and the indirect method. The strategies in the DNA laboratory, for DNA extraction, we need to consider quality and the quantity of DNA. For DNA amplification or profiling, we use the best kit or method because we have uh, several uh, um, kit uh, that we need to choose and also the DNA matching process. Of course, contamination is a very important issue. This is the example of time period of identification procedure. And this is uh, the examples of uh, positive identification during a DVI operation. Uh, several results of high profile cases, the first Bali bombing in 2002, uh, we use the primary and also secondary identifiers. 
and this is from the JW Marriott uh, terrorist attack, uh, which is, uh, we can see here there's a typical wound pattern that the body like shredded in pieces. We need to, uh, uh, we need to examine the uh, suspect of perpetrators. Uh, so we need to reconstruct the body including the face. Uh, this is where the uh, dentist is uh, play a big role in reconstructing the face. Uh, so after this we can uh, reconstruct all body parts and uh, by showing the specific pattern of a suicide bomber. We can see symmetric body parts missing this of the central parts uh, and then we can like uh, reconstruct by also DNA examinations. This is the Sukhoi Superjet uh, 100 in 2012. From eight days, we managed to identify all 45 bodies by dental, dental and DNA, DNA and fingerprints. And the last one was in Air Asia crash in 2014, uh, also uh, with the same methods. So in conclusion, the identification of a disaster victim has an important role due to its social, legal, and justice values. Using primary identifiers, strategies to conduct an efficient and successful victim identification is considered necessary. Uh, the acknowledgement, the pictures are courtesy from the DVI Indonesia and uh, also from the NL Laboratory uh, Indonesian National Police. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Nur Sami Sudarsono from Universitas, Air, uh, Universitas Indonesia. It seems that uh, you have uh, something significant uh, role uh, for helping police to identify uh, disaster victims. Uh, great job, Dr. Sami. And next, uh, the next presenter will be uh, Dr. Hiroko Oka from Hiroshima University. Uh, she is currently appointed as the associate professor at Biomedical and Health Science in Hiroshima University. Dr. Oka, please deliver your presentation in 15 minutes. Yes. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Okay. Sorry for the trouble from our side. I'm Hiroko Oka from Hiroshima University, Department of Global Dental Medicine and Center for Cause of Death Investigation, Research and Education. In this presentation, I'd like to share with you about the present status of dental identification work in Hiroshima and the collaboration with Hiroshima University. Hiroshima is one of the 47 prefectures in Japan and located in the west of Honshu Island. Maybe you know Miyajima and Atomic Bomb Town. My score, Hiroshima University has 12 undergraduate scores and 11 graduate scores. I belong to graduate school of biomedical health sciences. Three schools of medicine, dentistry, and pharmaceutical sciences integrated into this graduate school. This slide shows identification of an identified body in Hiroshima 2016. We had 355 unidentified bodies and 77% of them were identified by dental findings. 
The clinical dentist team of Hiroshima Dental Association mainly cooperate with this work. In Hiroshima, regarding the forensic autopsies, forensic pathologists and the Department of Legal Medicine Hiroshima Universities are appointed. appointed. For identification, as Dr. Kosakas introduced, the local clinical dentist team of local prefecture dental association also attended together with universities. The members of the Police Dentistry Association work to take dental findings, like a dental chart, dental x-ray photos, oral photos. When we had a great East Japan earthquake in 2011, we made up a special team for the identification work with experts in both sides, then sent this special team to Miyagi prefectures. Hiroshima University newly established Center for Cause of Death Investigation with the collaboration among prefectural government, Coast Guard, police, and local medical professional associations, including medical doctors, pharmaceutical scientists, also the dentists, and local hospitals. The mission of center is to develop the research and education. About the practice, this work are under the request of our local government. Now the new center facilities are under the construction and new system start the middle of next month. So from next I'd like to share with you about some collaborations. Digital PEM project with Department of Emergency and Critical Care Medicine and Dental Neglect Predictive Project with Department of Pediatric Dentistry and DBI Tabletop Exercises with Center for Cause of Death Investigation. The first one Digital PEM, Department of Emergency and Critical Care Medicine developed digital PEM system to make a digital data of dental chart directly from the handwriting. When we had a big landslide in Hiroshima following heavy rain in 2014, more than 70 people were killed. At that time, Dental Association team of Hiroshima Dental Association applied this system to identify and correct and keep the dental findings. In Hiroshima, as Dr. Kosaka introduced, the Hiroshima Dental Association team used the JDA format for the dental chart. The next one is Dental neglect. The Department of Pediatric Dentistry is uh, working for the prediction of abuse, including dental neglect. They visited children shelter care center. As we know, the number of dental caries of the children in Japan is quite small. Through these activities, it is revealed that children in the Temporary shelter care facilities had a lot of dental carriers. It means there is a possibility that we, also the local dentists, can find the children who have a family problem before something happens through the regular dental checkup. The last one is table by table top exercises. Center for Cause of Death Investigation work on education and research for professionals and students. Needless to say about the importance to develop professional skills and knowledge of each professional. Also, we know the importance to develop the interprofessional work and foster the new generation. The training in this photo shows 
but BB achieved top exercises with members of Forest Dentistry Association and forensic pathologists, forensic odontologist, young dentists, young medical doctors, also the dental students. In this exercise, they use an Interpol DBI system to understand how the collaboration among the specialists is important for the DBI. The dental student team also join and do the exercise. This is the last slide. Now, new Center for the Cause of Death Investigation System started. We have the radiologist to diagnose the AICTs, also the forensic dentist, also forensic pathologist is working under the collaboration with the Department of Pathology, Forensic Medicine, Radiology, Oral Medicine, Oral Radiologist, many departments. So we hope, we'd like to share with you our future result. Also, I want to, or we want to share with you also the share your great experience also. Thank you very much. Sheshe, Chirimakasi. Thank you, Dr. Oka. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for sharing your fantastic works in Hiroshima University. Uh, before we are entering the discussion session, I remind you to take some pictures from your each sites and uh, please send the photos uh, to my email for my reports and also. I have sent you a survey or a questionnaires uh, to your email. Please send the questionnaires and uh, it will be useful for my reports. So the discussion session, uh, it will take around 10 minutes, will be led by Dr. Nurtami Sudarsono. Dr. Nurtami, please helping me to moderate the discussion. You have okay. uh, 10 minutes. Yeah? Are there any questions to all the speakers? Are there any questions to all of the speakers from University? It's okay. Okay. Yes. Right. I have a question to Dr. Agun from Penang University. Yeah. Thank you very much for your kind of interesting topics. And so in DNA analysis from the tools, I want to ask you, which tissues did you use? So they are dental pulp or like a ligament? Which part did you use? We, uh, we use uh, from a uh, 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 Full uh, pulp, 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 uh, pulp uh, partition from from the teeth, from the tooth, and uh, 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 be, uh, be, before we 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 we, we uh, extract uh, uh, the, the tissue from the pulp uh, tissue, we 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 uh, drill with with uh, some pool to to to. Uh, to make a uh, open uh, open uh, pulp. Uh, after that, we we use a file, a uh, uh, dental file, to to extract uh, the the, uh, the pulp tissue from the tooth from Sanatamura. Yeah, thank you very much. So I understand that you use the pulp to for uh, DNA analysis. And then how about the dry tooth? 
Have you have you tried to analyze uh, the drivers? Okay. If we use uh, the drive tool, we we uh, we can use uh, with uh, maybe uh, the tissue will uh, will be uh, damaged with, uh, in in our uh, in in uh, uh, in uh, the influence of uh, the climb, climate uh, or or uh, or other other influence. But we 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 can uh, use a, a crash method to uh, uh, to obtain the DNA more than if we use a pulp a pulp method. If uh, we use a, a, a dry to as a specimen from Sanakamura. Thank you very much. Terima kasih. Yeah. Well, welcome. Are there any questions? <coughs> Are there any questions from Usu uh, or Hiroshima or Miyagi? Uh, from Usu, yes, please. Thank you, Doctor. <coughs> you would like to ask to Doctor from Hiroshima University. Uh, are you using the same procedural standard according to DVI procedural standard when you are uh, doing identification? Thank you. Thank you for your questions. Uh, same to the Dr. Kosaka's Tohoku University for the Identification work in Japan, also in Hiroshima, we use the local method. And, uh, but uh, we understand we have to prepare the international issues. So for the training, we have some options. Sometimes we set up the training using a DVI format in Japan. Some special skill training for the dentist. Sometimes we use the local method training. Oh. Is it okay? Okay. Any more questions uh, from okay. Yes, yes, please. Just ask. Yeah. Louder, please, and introduce yourself. You need to speak up louder, please. Hello. Um, yes, good. Okay, you can hear me now. Yes, louder, please. Okay. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rankia from University of Pennsylvania, Darren. And I'm going to talk about the DVI method. I'd like to ask a question to Dr. Kimoku from Hiroshima. Um, I'm interested to look your presentation regarding the DVI method. No. Uh, can you repeat once more the questions? Okay. Um, I'm interested to the presentation from Dr. Hiroko regarding the digital pen. Perhaps you could tell us more about it. Thank you. Digital pen, Sensei. Yes. Can you explain more about the digital pen? Okay, about the digital pen system. Yeah. So, do you know the digital pen system? Yes. Actually, you want to ask. yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, the digital pen system is some kind of recording system. 
uh, usually sometimes the dentist or staff regarding the DBI work make a report by handwriting first. But uh, in Hiroshima Dental Association gym, use a digital pen system, directly use a digital pen for the recording. Their writing directly translate into the digital data. So no need to input again the data into the PC or any kind of official format. That digital pen system also can keep the X-ray photos or oral photos together with the dental chart handwriting record. That is one kind of recording and stock system. Uh, they say the question is uh, to know whether the uh, the, the system the uh, then the system can has a, some kind of an application that can be used uh, maybe outside Japan. Uh, now we just only for the system based on the JBA format system. So. Mm. That is a future plan. Okay. But the digital pen system is maybe you know the common system. We can apply or you can apply these techniques for the recording. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for the question from Universitas Pajajaran. Are there any questions? Okay. Oka sensei. Dozo. I have Ilanga University's uh, <coughs> Professor Mick. So you uh, about the just asking you the about the cigarette, the sample from the cigarette. You you say the condition of Indonesia is affected. So yes. So so what kind of the sample is easy to detect from the cigarette tops in Indonesia. That is a general easy means that for survivor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we can we can use the cigarette butts and we can take the saliva in the cigarette butts for one hour, three hour and six hour. Only this this type of hour because uh, climate in Indonesia. Maybe mm -hmm. another country maybe different, I don't know. Yes. What it is your question? Ah, yes, yes. So so for more than six hours. Because uh, more than six hours I think is too long for mm -hmm. For for this cigarette, maybe contamination with another another things. So I prefer only one hour, three hour, and six hour. Maybe in the next time, I will. Ah, okay. Uh, Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. Welcome. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. And for the next questions is from Brawijaya University. Yes. Okay. <coughs> Louder, please. Thank you for the opportunity. My name is Vidya. I'm from Brawijaya University. 
Uh, I will ask to Dr. Nur Tami from uh, University of Indonesia and Dr. Oka from Hiroshima University. Uh, in your presentation, uh, I get the point that to identify, uh, we must uh, get the process of reconciliation. That means we can we must match uh, between antemortem data and postmortem data. So, uh, how if we don't have antemortem data? Uh, maybe if uh, there are no dental record or maybe uh, no family cam, so no no information about the antemortem data. Uh, is that still impossible to we identify the body? Maybe. Thank you. Okay. okay, I will try to uh, answer your questions. So, in the process of uh, matching the endomortem and postmortem data, uh, we can use like primary identifiers, uh, fingerprints, dental, or DNA, or maybe combinations of each. And also, there are secondary identifiers. Uh, identifiers as uh, for example the properties uh, or specific uh, tattoo or uh, uh, medical records uh, that the victims has uh, experienced some kind of uh, major surgery in his body so <clears throat> we can combine both from uh, primary to secondary identifiers but uh, we must certain that uh, if possible, at least one of the primary identifiers is included. If we don't have the uh, dental data, we can use uh, fingerprints. If it's not uh, available, we can use DNA. If we cannot find the family or uh, from the victims, maybe we can trace about his personal belongings. This is uh, what we call the uh, direct sampling, uh, direct reference samples, which means um, we look for his trace, uh, DNA trace from his personal belongings. For example, from the razors or from an unused clothes, uh, sorry, and uh, the clothes that are not yet uh, clean uh, that he already used, uh, and also uh, from toothbrush we can trace the DNA from his personal belongings. Uh, but if it's possible, then we can look for the relatives. Would that answer your questions? Okay, thank you, Dr. Nurtami. Okay, and your other questions, please? You have another one, right? You have one more question? Uh, to yes. Maybe this is same question uh, like to you, but I uh, want to know the experience of Dr. Oka in Hiroshima University about uh, like that. If we don't have uh, maybe antemortem data, maybe Dr. Oka have another experience to uh, match the data. Thank you. Uh, oh, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, Dr. Kosaka's presentation uh, Kosaka Sensei also introduced the Japanese system. Uh, like, uh, even though the families, we cannot find families and relatives. In the case of Japan, we have the national insurance system. Almost all the persons in Japan go to the medical doc, uh, have the consultation, have the experience to go to the medical doctors or medical dental dentist. So, if something happened and uh, AM data we don't have, usually a police sends this information to the dental office and the local dentist check their own record. Or the, in the case, we also have the national regular medical checkup system for the children. So, in every year, elementary school student, also the junior high school student, have to take the dental examination. They also have make the dental chart. It means they have the school members also have the dental information. So the 
Doctors in University of Indonesia said, of course, we don't only focus on dental findings. We have to generate all information from the DNA or female prints, any other things. But uh, about the condition of dental dentistry in Japan, we have many backup systems. Is it okay, Dr. Kosaka? Okay, uh, Dr. Tommy. Thank you, Dr. Tommy. Dr. Tommy, I think we have, we are run, running, running out of time. Okay, we thank do. you very much. Thank you very much for assisting me to lead the discussion for uh, session. So before we close uh, officially this meeting, I will ask Professor Nakamura to conclude or to make some uh, wrap, to wrap up the meeting. What is the summary of the meeting? Please, Thank Professor you. Nakamura. Thank you very much for the nice presentation and uh, active discussion. So it was very interesting about the uh, works of dental identification in Miyagi, Hiroshima, and Jakarta. So you have greatly contributed to the first work. And also I like uh, topics uh, from uh, Professor Miku and blood type identification in saliva on cigarette beds. So you are like a Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> yes, I have a question. So, what the meaning of the similar stone? <laughs> okay. So, I uh, since everybody is working very actively, so the the future, the active exchange of the experience and the scientific evidence regarding the dental identification is uh, necessary. Uh, for the future development of the forensic dentistry. So I believe that this uh, precious opportunity, like IPAN, will be fruitful for the development of uh, forensic dentistry that may be the truth in silence through the data and tissue in the oral cavity. So I'd like to say thank you for uh, all uh, your joining and also the good job of the speakers and uh, all engineers. Thank you very much. See you again. Bye bye. See you. Bye bye. Uh, thank, you. thank you, Dr. Nakamura. Thank you, Professor Nakamura. So I will uh, return my uh, opportunity for controlling this meeting to Dr. Moriyama to close this meeting officially. Thank you, everybody. Dr. Moriyama, please close the meeting. Yes. Before finishing the uh, before finishing this session, uh, I'd like uh, I'd like to say goodbye to the e from each station, right? We have a, a little bit more time. Uh, so uh, from uh, Hiroshima University. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for giving us this opportunity, and see you soon somewhere. Okay, thank you. Next, uh, Talk University. Thank you for the great opportunity. Thank you very much. See you again. Okay. Next, uh, Smatra uh, Utara University. Please say goodbye to everyone. Smatra Utara. Right. Smatra Utara. This is from Sumatra Utara. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next, uh, Indonesia University. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, oh, <laughs> my very students. Good. A lot of people are gathering. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Master okay. students in foreign industry. <laughs> okay, next, uh, Eranga. Thank Eranga you. University. Thank you. 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 Thank
disconnected. Taiwan University? No? No. Hello. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We can. Okay, next. Uh, okay, next. The university put Puja Puja Jaram. Sorry, uh, my pronunciation is bad, right? Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.